morning and welcome. Welcome back here to the sanctuary of the Federated Church, and we're going to get started with worship here in a few minutes, and in the meantime, we're going to share some recorded music. morning and uh, to all the mothers that's watching there online uh, happy Mother's Day uh, things are slowly beginning to open up and around and uh, we just need to follow the guidelines and do everything we can to keep this virus from spreading and, and getting uh, 
started back up again. Uh, more of an announcement this morning. Uh, we are going to have a Zoom meeting uh, Tuesday, May 12th at 7 p.m. to discuss our reopening plan. So, um, the board members, and the, you know, you can check your email for a Zoom invite. If, if you haven't gotten one, well, let Dave know so that he can can get you the uh, the address for going on to that Zoom. Um, I know I, for one, can't wait to see all you sitting here in the sanctuary. And that day is coming soon. So, uh, for now, uh, I think Dave's got some special music, maybe some more announcements for us. Well, good morning, and uh, we welcome those of you joining us online uh, to our worship this morning. Uh, we were planning on uh, Scott Colbert joining us uh, this morning to, to help with some music leading and also to share a, uh, a special song. Um, they had some health issues, uh, and I think it's safe I can tell you this now. They're a little scared. Michelle was having some issues, and so they had to be quarantined. And, but in a timely manner, Scott just sent me an email. You know, they tested her for COVID 19 and it came back negative. So that's good to hear. Michelle's doing all right. But because of that, obviously, Scott couldn't join us this morning. So you're stuck with me to lead the songs this morning, but also he did send us a video, and so we're going to play Scott's special song, and that song is a Mother's Day song, so that's going to be our salute to all of you mothers here a, bit, a little bit later. But for now, we're going to enter into worship together, and we're going to sing a couple of, of praise songs, and the first one is Holy is the Lord, so sing along at home. Earth is filled with His glory. 
dead girl and a sick woman. Now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house, because his only daughter, a girl of about twelve, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowd almost crushed him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus said. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came and trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid, just believe, and she will be healed. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in without him, with him, excuse me, except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him, and knowing that she was dead, but he took her by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned, and at once she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. Okay, the, uh, the other reading this morning is also from Luke uh, 23, 39-43. That's when Jesus is on the cross. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers came up and mocked him. They offered him wine, vinegar, and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And there was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. Okay, so now come to our moment for offering. Uh, I just want to say at this point that uh, I get all the offering envelopes and, and they've been coming pretty steady and I appreciate all the people. You've uh, been, been, been pretty steady and for those of you who want to some more offerings or send in their offerings. You've got two or three options. You can mail them in or you can bring them into the church and put them in the slot on the secretary door. Or you can go to tithely.com. It, it all works and you'll be given credit for it. So uh, thank you for all your for all the offerings that we've received so far. And we've been doing fairly well. So thank you. Thank you, Louie. <coughs> Now Jason is going to focus in on on our screen here in the in the sanctuary, and uh, we're going to try something here. Uh, like I said, Scott was not able to be here this morning due to to Michelle's illness, but uh, he did make a video of this song, and this is a special 
Mother's Day song that he was planning to share with us, but he's got it on video, so we're going to do our best to share it in this way this morning. It's processing. We might get it, we might not. I think Jason's telling me we've got, we're not fast enough for it to, to do this alone. Is that what you're telling me, Jason? On the Facebook Live, probably. On, so, <clears throat> we'll, we'll send you the link to that um, at a later date, and uh, hopefully you can watch that uh, for, for Mother's Day. Um, I might even try to send it that out this afternoon. So, sorry that uh, we couldn't get that to run, but uh, that brings me to uh, our time of prayer together as a congregation and uh, want to share with you some prayer requests that we have. Uh, of course, we want to keep praying for John Fessler and his family and the loss of Sue. And uh, they are holding off on having a memorial service, of course, uh, you know, as things open up and, and they're able to do those type of things. We'll get you word when that's going to happen. And also we want to remember Lori Peterson and her family uh, and the loss of her dad and same situation they're holding off to have uh, uh, memorial services and such so so keep them both in, in your hearts and minds and prayers uh, as they have lost dear ones to them continue to remember Larry Stokes uh, as he's continuing to take treatments for cancer for pancreatic cancer uh, we want to continue to remember Debbie Little but Debbie continues to progress, and uh, uh, Jason wasn't positive, but uh, she was to be moved to rehab here recently, so she's moving right along and, and getting better, so we're thankful for that. I want to lift up uh, my youngest daughter, Caitlin Doles, this morning. Um, we, I shared with you all a while back, and I think most of you know that she has scoliosis, and uh, she is going to be having corrective surgery for that. And uh, if all goes as planned, of course, they're slowly opening up non-essential operations uh, in operating rooms and everything. And the doctor, the surgeon, is fairly confident that we're going to go on schedule. And so that is scheduled for May 26th. So that's two weeks from this coming Tuesday. And uh, I am going to be uh, gone that following Sunday, which is uh, May 31st. And, and uh, Deanne's going to preach for us on May 31st. So thank you to Deanne in advance for doing that. Um, the Sunday before that, um, we're going to be gone also. But we're going to try something a little different for, for May 24th. And then we're going to pre-record our worship later that in the late week before leading up to the 24th. And then we'll, we're going to have some sort of watch party uh, set up so you all can watch it. Uh, Sunday morning at 10 like you usually do and, and have your chat time and everything so that'll that'll be good but we're going to pre-record the worship for the May 24th service so um, just uh, bear that in mind you may see that up and you can watch it before then if you want but uh, we will try to have some sort of effort to have a, a watch party so that folks can do what we've been doing and watch it at 10 o'clock on May 24th. So keep Caitlin in your prayers as we uh, approach that time together. Uh, Bruce Reynolds sent me a text yesterday, very excited about welcoming another great-granddaughter into his family. Uh, her name is, uh, forgive me if I don't pronounce this right, Samira Rose Bradley was born. I think it was 6 pounds, 15 ounces, um, and uh, I didn't write that detail down. But uh, this is uh, Tony's 
daughter, Brittany, is the one that, uh, that gave birth to Samira. And so congratulations to the, to the Reynolds Arce clan, another, another child as part of the, the family there. And so we have praise for that, that uh, that's, that's gone well and that, that birth, that child is added to their family. So let's take time now and pray together as the body of Christ. Gracious and Heavenly Father, you are so good to us, and it's great that we are able to, to celebrate life in the midst of such a difficult time. And, uh, every day, I hope folks are praying. We, we've been about praying to you at 8 o'clock every evening for the things that are going on because of COVID-19 and the people that are affected, the lives that are affected, and, and we pray, Lord, that you would uh, give us peace, that you would keep those safe who have not been who have not been infected. Pray for those that who have, that they have, that they that it not be a drastic case, but in those situations, Lord, where there, there are those that are suffering greatly from this, we pray your hand upon each and every one of them. We pray for people to be wise as things begin to open up, for people to be cautious to do what people, what the medical professionals are telling us to do to prevent the spread of this awful disease. And Lord, we pray for our leaders. We pray for those on the front lines treating those with this disease, those that are uh, in greater exposure areas where it's uh, uh, risky even more so than perhaps in other areas. Just have your hands upon all of this, Lord. May we soon be able to see the comebacks that have happened, that we are back to whatever our new normal will be as, as, as soon as possible, and that people feel comfortable. We pray for a vaccine, Lord. We pray that that comes soon and that it be effective, that there be cures for this disease. Pray that your hand be in the midst of this. We pray for the families of, of we pray for John Fessler and his family and the loss of, of our dear friend Sue. We pray for Lori Peterson and, and her family as they have lost her dad. Have your hand upon them. Oh Lord, you know their pain. You know the difficulty of losing one any time, Lord, but especially during this time where we have to delay to honor them properly. So have your hand upon them. Know that, that their church family, this body of Christ, walks with them. We lift up Larry Stokes and his ongoing uh, battle with cancer. Have your hand upon him and his family. Give him peace, give him assurance as he moves forward. We pray for uh, Debbie Little. And we thank you, Lord, that she is a, a case of, of moving and marching towards victory over COVID-19 and that you would continue to move her in that direction. Lord, we give you praise again for the birth of Samira Rose Bradley and uh, this great addition to the, to the Reynolds clan. Have your hand upon this little one as she grows up, that she would... Uh, be safe, Lord, that in the midst of this new world that we're facing, that she come to know Jesus through the loving arms of your son, and that you bless their family to be of influence to her. Lord, I lift up my daughter, I lift up Caitlin to you this morning. I pray your hand upon her as uh, she faces this surgery, and we thank you for the great doctors and nurses that will care for her, that will do this procedure and uh, uh, just uh, may you surround us and them with your loving, healing hands. Lord, uh, we pray that you would uh, just speak in our midst as we go through this process, this, this thing that no one's really ever done before, how, how to come back from COVID-19. What does that look like? 
Lord, I think of the churches that decided to meet face to face this morning, and I pray your hand upon them. I pray that as they meet you, keep them safe. Keep them wise. And I pray for our church and the churches in our community as they wrestle with how to move forward, to come back to worship. May we be wise, Lord. May we do our be about due diligence in taking care of one another and taking care of any that would come back when the time comes. And now, Lord, I pray that you would speak through me, that the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, wherever we are this morning, would be holy and acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock, our redeemer, our strength. Amen. Well, we're starting a new series this morning, um, and uh, this all relates to our to the process that we're going through in life right now of slowly returning to whatever this new normal is going to look like. And I first wanted to take just a few moments and share with you just a. a a quick overview of where the church is as far as our comeback, if you will, and that being a comeback to having face-to-face, in-house worship uh, here in, in our building. And I want to assure you as we've been praying, and I, I think the message is clear, that we are being deliberate. We are being careful. We're going to take this fairly slowly, especially considering... Uh, a good portion of our congregation is in that 65 and over category. And, uh, and people that I've also talked to that have pre-existing conditions that they're being cautious as well. We are being cautious with you. And so as Louie alluded to in our announcements, we are going to be having uh, a joint meeting of the trustees and the official board uh, at the beginning of the official board meeting on Tuesday. And I have some ideas and some plans that I have in mind as to how we move forward. Um, and then we'll discuss that. And, you know, if there's kinks to be worked out, we're going to work on that Tuesday night. But then the hope is that there will be a team in place. I've talked to some people saying, you'd be a good person to serve on this. But this isn't an official ask until the, until the two boards get together and say, that sounds good. But uh, I thought as soon as we can, we need to get rolling on this uh, because we want to be in here as soon as possible, but with precautions. But I will just say in general, don't expect that until June at this point, just so you know. Um, but so we, we're working to set this plan in motion, and it's a fine balance that we're doing here because, and the good news is our online worship has been going well and we've had great response to that and we are also applying for a grant and just so you know, online worship, we do not have any intentions of that going away. We are going to continue to do that and we've applied for this, we're going to apply for this grant that's going to improve our technology to give us a better quality online worship experience. Uh, we're going to improve our internet speed. I think that's part of the issue we just had why we couldn't play uh, Scout's videos because our internet is, speed is just not fast enough with everything that we're doing right now. Um, and so that's going to be something that we hope to improve through this uh, grant. Uh, we're going to connect our camera. We're going to get a new camera, hopefully, to broadcast the worship, and that's going to be connected to our sound system. Um, so it's just going to be a lot of improvements so that this online experience is going to be as be quality as well. But this is also going to mean uh, that when we get back into full swing, more people, we're going to need more people involved, especially on the technology and we're going to need probably two or three people every Sunday uh, taking care of these things. You know, Jason's been doing a lot of it, but we can't expect Jason to do all of it all the time and there's going to be needs for growth and volunteerism in these areas. I'm really looking to the youth, but also any adults who have an interest and want to be involved in such a way. But uh, no, this is going to, I want you all to own this and to, to uh, be a part as we move forward. But you know, in the meantime, as we prepare to come back, 
I thought, I, it made me think of a book that I read uh, a few years back called The Comeback. And, and this book was written by a, a minister, his name is Louis Giglio. And it's called The Comeback. And Louis Giglio is one of my favorite pastors. He's, he's a pastor, and he started a church uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. And the name of this church is the, uh, the Passion City Church uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. And, and Louis started this church with a guy that uh, many of you are probably familiar with, a well-known Christian music artist in the name of Chris Tomlin. And as a matter of fact, the two songs that, that I sang, that we sang together this morning, uh, are both written, co-written, I should say, by Louis Giglio and Chris Tomlin. So I was doing that on purpose there as we enter into this series together. So as we look to come back, and as various businesses and organizations come back, and also us as individuals literally are coming back, is it not appropriate that we look at what the author and the giver of life, the, the author of the greatest comeback story ever, Jesus Christ, what does he have to say to us and show us about our own comeback stories? And so today is really going to be a, a starting point, a jumping off point to introduce us to this, this uh, series called Comeback Stories. And so we're, we're on the comeback trail, and, and I want to give you some, some basic truths we need to embrace as we talk about our comeback stories. And as I say, our comeback stories, that leads to the first truth, which is that all of us have comeback stories. We have either had one, or we're in the middle of one, or we've just completed one, or there's one yet to come, right? And it doesn't matter how old or young you are, there's, there's a comeback alive in you. If you're a Christian, that is a comeback story because we needed a, a redemption in our life. We needed, we needed Jesus in our life. That is, and this is what Jesus is all about. Um, and so I emphasize the plurality in that we have stories. We don't just have one story of comebacks, but we have multiple stories in our lives of, of comebacks. And I think most everyone loves a good comeback story. Think of your favorite movies. I would gather that most of them are about some sort of comeback story or another, right? And so... All of us have comeback stories. Now, here's the next great truth about comebacks. And I kind of alluded to it already. It is never too late or never too soon to experience a comeback in your life. And this is where I want us to jump into the scripture and the passages that Louis read for us in the book of Luke. And this morning, I've got three examples for you of comeback stories that we're in the midst of Jesus' life as he uh, helped equip these people to have comeback stories. And in the passage in Luke 8, we had two stories going on at once. In, in Luke 8, 40 through 56. And I want to talk about the one that's sort of in the middle first. And that's the story of the woman. This, this woman ha had a bleeding problem. For 12 years, she had suffered from this bleeding problem. And uh, there were crowds and crowds around Jesus, and this woman was trying to get Jesus' attention because she believed Jesus could heal him. And, and finally she resorted that maybe if I just touch his robe, I'll be healed. And she was able to reach out and touch him. And she was healed. And Jesus, as he put it, felt power leave his body. And he immediately calls out, who touched me? Who touched me? And I mean, remember, he's surrounded by people. And so his disciples are like, who touched you? Come on, Jesus. Are you, are you serious? Uh, there's people all around. And you, you want us to tell you who touched you? I mean, come on. That, that's impossible. But the woman confesses, it, it was me. I touched you, Jesus. And Jesus responds by saying, daughter, your faith has healed you. And she no longer had this bleeding Problem. Comeback 
story complete. Wow. Okay. Twelve years. To, so to, so she, she was suffering for twelve years with this and couldn't find answers, couldn't get help. But we need to hear that it's never too late. I'm sure a lot of us have issues, be it, be it uh, health-wise, be it emotional, be it financial, relational, all of these issues. We've had issues that have been gone on, ongoing for years. But we should never give up. We should never think this is it's too late for a healing to happen, for a, a reconciliation to come about. We need to believe that God has a comeback story for us in the midst of these things. And then in the same passage here, we see before and after the story of the bleeding woman, this story about Jairus and his daughter. And in this example, it tells us it's both that we're never too young, and it was never too early, and it's that we're never too old again. It's never too late again, okay? Uh, because there, here was this child, this pre, I'm assuming a pre-adolescent child, pre-teen, because the Bible tells us she was about 12 years old, and she was sick, deadly sick. And so Jairus falls at the feet of Jesus and is begging him, please come to my house and, and heal my daughter. And then Jesus agrees, and they're all on their way to the house. And then this is when the, when the story with the women, the woman happens right in the middle of this. And after the woman was healed, the, the message comes from Jairus' house. Okay, you can leave Jesus alone because your daughter's died. It's too late. It's too late. She's, she's passed on. But Jesus assures Jairus, it's not too late. It's not too late. I'm going to go with you to your home. And so they get there. And, and if you know the context of back in those days, people would pay others to be paid mourners. I mean, there were experts in mourning. Isn't that crazy? Experts in crying, and they'd play sad music, and they'd help it. It was really because mourning was important to people. They wanted to make sure they mourned and mourned well for those that they lost. They understood that. And so they would hire people to kind of set the tone, to set the mood. And so there were these paid mourners there for his daughter. And they come in. And Jesus looks at him and says, stop it. She's not dead. She's just sleeping. And this helps us understand why these same people that were mourning and crying all of a sudden started laughing. They laughed at Jesus. Because they were paid to cry, but, you know, it was, you know, it was kind of, they were good actors. And so... You know, they immediately turned that off and they laughed at this ridiculous thing they thought Jesus said. She's asleep? No, she's dead. Look at her. She's dead. But Jesus, they cleared everybody out. And Jesus takes the hands of this little girl and says, get up. And she does. As a matter of fact, like a, a, a child, like a lot of kids are, you know, we think they're always eating. He says, I bet she needs a snack. Why don't you feed her? That's, and, and next thing you know, she's there eating with her family. This girl that was taken, left for dead, is now back alive. Comeback story completed. Number two. Wow. I want you to pay a special note of what Luke chapter 8 verse 50 says. It says, when Jairus gets the message... Jesus says to Jairus, it's okay. Just believe and she will be healed. So for the woman, the woman with the bleeding problem, Jesus says, your faith has made you well. For Jairus, he was challenged to believe, to have faith, and it's going to be okay. Now granted, both of these stories are healing, physical healing healing stories. And I know probably a lot of you in the back of your minds, well, you know, I prayed for people to be healed before and God hasn't healed them. And yes, you're right. Sometimes God chooses not to give us a physical healing. But I want you to hear this. And even though that may not, sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't, Christ may not always heal our bodies, but he does want to heal our spirit. He always wants to heal our spirits. Let me give you a couple examples of this. The great Apostle Paul spoke to the Corinthians about 
this thorn in the flesh that he had, this, this pain, this difficulty, that he said he prayed three times to God to be, to be free of it. And the Lord's response to Paul was, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. And so he healed Paul's spirit, but not his body. Paul goes on to say in this passage, For this I delight in my weaknesses, for in my weakness I am made strong. Sometimes we need to have these things that maybe keep us humble or keep us aware that God's grace is sufficient. So we don't always receive a healing. People aren't always healed when we pray for them. But he does heal our spirits. And Jesus himself, the great Beatitudes, uh, the first two speak to this. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And the second, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Again, Jesus is speaking to those, those difficulties in life. I'm here to comfort you. I'm here to help you in your spirit. Jesus may not always heal our bodies or the bodies of those we love that we pray for, but he will heal our spirits eventually in his time. Sometimes it takes a while. But he will do that when we allow him to do so. And this leads us to our final example of the comeback story. And that is the thief on the cross found in, in the latter part of Luke 23. And most of us, I think, are familiar with this story that when Jesus was crucified, that he was hung on a cross between two thieves. And as, we, as they were hanging on the cross, one of them scoffed at Jesus, just was unkind and bitter and said, Aren't, if you're the Christ, aren't you the Christ? Well, then get us out of this mess. Angrily saying this. Well, in the other, hanging on the other side, on the cross of Jesus, looked at the, at the other thief and says, don't you have any fear? Don't you have any respect for God? We deserve what we're getting. He is innocent. He doesn't deserve this. This is all in their last moments. Understand the crucifixion, that the whole thing was to suffocate you because you had to press up on your nailed feet to get air in your lungs. And it was excruciating pain. So they're having this conversation in the midst of excruciating pain. And so after the thief says this to the other thief, he then turns to Jesus and he truly has a repentant moment in his heart because the next thing out of his mouth is, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He believed he was the Messiah, that he was getting ready to enter into his eternal kingdom. And Jesus responds, remember both of them dying in this moment. Jesus had so much compassion that even in his dying breaths, he looked at the thief and said, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in Paradise. Comeback story three completed. Complete for the thief. Even in the midst of dying, could you imagine the healing of that man's spirit? No, it, he didn't get him out of the mess that he was in, <clears throat> but he did heal his spirit in those final moments of his life. So it is never, ever too late for our comeback story to begin. But I want you to notice something, that in each comeback story, that there, that there was something that we saw in each one. There was something that was in common in each one, and that is there was an expression of faith from the person experiencing the comeback. People were having, putting their faith in these crucial moments, in these crisis moments, they were putting their faith in Jesus. The woman believing she just had to touch Jesus to be healed. Jairus believing Jesus was the only way for his daughter to, to live, even when he was told she was dead. And the thief believing Jesus' innocence and holiness to the point of asking him to be remembered when Jesus came into his kingdom. All of them expressing their faith 
in Jesus. You know, we all have been and continue to be in need of comebacks like these three people experience, these really these four people. And this is what Christ's redemption is all about. But understand that our, our comeback stories, like theirs, need to begin from a place and be rooted in our faith in Christ. You know, the, the, the funny thing is, and this is so relatable, that even the great figures in the Bible, and especially you think of three great figures in the Old Testament, even they had trouble trusting God. Even, and he, they even went to the other extreme to a certain degree. You think of Adam and Eve, they, they had all they needed, but they failed to trust God when they took that bite, munched into that apple, that juicy bite of fruit that God had forbidden. Because they thought God was keeping something from them. Listen to what Giglio says about that incident. Giglio says, They believed a lie that many of us believe. God was withholding something good from them. So they chose to go in a harmful direction. A direction that was clearly off limits. But the amazing thing is God blessed Adam and Eve anyway. He, he continued to walk with them, to be with them. <clears throat> Think of Abraham and Sarah. Wow. They were in their 90s, barren, childless. But God promised them descendants. He promised them a comeback story. He says their descendants will be as many as the stars in the heavens. But, but what happened is they didn't trust. They tried to manufacture it themselves. God was, they thought, Sarah thought, God's holding back something. So Sarah took things into her own hands and said, Abraham, have a baby with my servant Hagar. And from the moment that she conceived a child, the moment that she was pregnant, this was a bad choice. Jealousy, rivalry. And eventually a parting of the ways was the result of that choice to go out and do this on their own. But God took care of all of them and still followed through on his promise. Still gave them a child way past their childbearing years. How about Moses? <laughs> Moses, upon observing the atrocities, the plight of his people, the Israelites, Seeing one of them being treated terribly by an Egyptian slave member, slave master, and instead of instead of turning to God on that, he took matters into his own hands and he murdered that slave master. And so he fled, and for forty years he's got this baggage. He's out tending to his father-in-law's sheep in the desert, and it took a burning bush that didn't really burn up, and the Lord speaking to him. To get through to him. And, but God used that passion that Moses had for his people to rescue Israel from the hands of Pharaoh. All of this to say that faith is the way to our comebacks. And in the process, we need to avoid the thought that God is holding out on us. That, that he has something, he's thinking we should we should take matters, we shouldn't take matters into our own hands. We should trust God. In other words, when it comes to our comeback stories, don't buy into the old, the ends justify the means say. No, no. We need to seek a holy and pure direction and we need to trust God in the process. And at the heart of each of our ongoing comeback stories is for those of us who are Christians, when we accepted Christ, something brought us to that point. It wasn't of our own doing. It was God's Spirit at work in us. And it is through our faith and the faith of others that brought us to the decision of accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. But understand, our comeback story didn't end there. God is in the saving business. He is in the comeback Business. A wise man once told me, God is about the business of saving us every day, over and over again. Not just once, 
but throughout our entire lives. So in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic thing, we, where we see the storms of life rearing its ugly head, just don't, we shouldn't be too surprised that we're going through these difficult times. Because Jesus said, in this life, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. If you've been paying attention, you've heard me quote that scripture before. But in the midst of all we are facing, Jesus has a comeback story for our church and for all of us that make up that church. For any of you that are out there that maybe you're not even a member of our church or any church. He's got a comeback story for you. And I believe he's got a comeback story for the entire church across the world as well. So as we enter into this series together, I hope this has been a good introduction to get you thinking about your comeback story. But I want you to open your hearts, open your minds, your souls to God's comeback stories that we're going to look at in his word. And I want you to think about the comebacks that he's already given you. And I want you to know that there are comebacks for you yet to come. So what is your comeback story? What is it going to be? Don't try to manufacture it on your own, but have faith that God has a comeback in store for you. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you we thank you for your goodness to us, and we thank you that you are the author of our comeback stories. May we trust in that this day and every day. May we hear your redemptive call in every area of our life, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, relationally, financially, all these areas, Lord, where we may be struggling with something, where we need to come back. Help us not to manufacture, try to manufacture one, but to lift these issues up to you and ask, Lord, redeem me, help me, show me your way in this process. Show us as a church how we are to come back, how we are to come back and worship you well, not only online, but in this building and what that's going to look like from here on out. Help us, Lord. Help this world as we are in a big storm right now. We're in a difficult time. But give us assurance that you are still on the throne. And I ask this, Lord. I pray this in your son's most precious name. Well, thanks again for joining us here from the, the sanctuary at, at the Federated Church of Brookston. And, uh, may I just, for benediction, say that you go in peace and have a mo happy Mother's Day, however you are planning to celebrate that, and to, even though your celebrations may be limited, to celebrate well. So happy Mother's Day to all of you ladies out there. God bless, and we'll see you next week.